Welcome back. Pick the principle at play. There's a lot of them, like not dismissing a victim of alleged sexual assault, not, no matter how long ago it was, and no matter how powerful the accused is today. But if you're the accused, well, how do you defend yourself? If you're on the Senate Judiciary Committee, how do you, or is it even possible to ignore the intense partisan pressure that rules everything these days. And joining us for more are Sarasota, Sarasota attorney extraordinary Morgan Bentley, Frank Alcock, a political science professor at New <coughs> College. And joining us by Skype is a columnist for insider NJT, NJDOT.com, Alan Steinberg, who served in the administration of President George W. Bush. And Alan, I'm going to start with you, not just because you have a great uh, name, you wrote a column recently that said you are a never Trumper that supports the Kavanaugh confirmation. Do the allegations against him now um, make any difference to you? Yes, they do. I think it's a serious complaint. I think that there should be a delay on the vote for the nomination until both sides have testified and until the FBI does a thorough investigation of the circumstances uh, surrounding the event and also get some testimony from the people who were there. Otherwise, the nomination would be delayed. And Frank, that is the essential problem here, that um, the Senate, uh, the majority, seems to want to rush this through in order to get a vote and get Kavanaugh on the bench before the Supreme Court um, session begins. And uh, there, it does not seem to be any kind of movement in terms of having a, a real FBI investigation. And should there be one? Uh, you cannot extract yourself from the politics of this. And so I'm well aware of the start date of the next uh, Supreme Court session, as well as the upcoming election and the political implications of that. And yes, they want this done before then. My understanding, though, um, from a number of people that are at or have been at the FBI is that an FBI investigation might not take too long. It might just take a, a few days. And so I would agree if we're only looking at a few more days to get some more facts uh, before we have a hearing. And I think uh, Dr. Ford has said even maybe late next week she'd be willing to do it. I don't think it, it might be a good idea to go ahead and tell the FBI to collect a few more facts. Well, that would be up to President Trump, who does not seem inclined to do that. But Morgan, uh, how you know, we, we talked before our show, this Senate Judiciary Committee meeting is not a, it's not a criminal proceeding. It's not a, a really even a fact-finding proceeding. So how, what would you do? Uh, well, if I was on the committee, you mean? Uh, look, in a perfect world, a sober adult group of people would listen to this, take it seriously, look at it with seriousness, and respond accordingly. They would not, and as I think both sides are doing, is prejudging, putting the conclusion out there before they, they know anything about it, and I think Democrats and Republicans are both guilty of this, this go-around, is, you know, you, you listen to, to the people, you give them their, their serious due, uh, you know, their due process, and listen to their story. It's a serious allegation. If we were talking about a violent crime, uh, you know, a, a murder or something, we wouldn't even be talking about why did you wait and why did you not, you know, why did you wait from July until September? We wouldn't even be talking about that. So I think you, you, a sober group of people would listen to this, come to their conclusions, and then take their vote. Our conversation on the allegations made against Brett Kavanaugh continues. Welcome back. We are talking about the allegations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. And joining us for more are Sarasota attorney Morgan Bentley, Frank Alcock, political science professor at New College, and joining us by Skype, a columnist for Insider NJ, J, NJ, I'll get this right, dot com, Alan Steinberg, who served in the administration of President George W. Bush. And Alan, let me ask you uh, this. You heard the interview with our uh, local uh, Republican conservative who uh, absolutely says that uh, this is, is b politics 100 percent, um, even suggesting that, um, uh, that, that members of uh, the, the Democratic Party should be held in contempt of, of Congress for pushing this along. Do all Republicans feel that way, or, or are there Republicans out there who want this fully vetted? Well, I don't feel that way. I think it's a serious allegation. And uh, I have been sure both political parties over the last decade playing politics and I, I think this is something that is very regrettable. But again, I think that this issue has to be heard out. And I think that as Lewis Neiser once said, you can't make a determination 
until you he, hear, and see witnesses. And at that particular point, a determination will be made. But I have a concern that uh, in terms of the Republican Party, they may get the confirmation done, but it could be a pyrrhic victory that results in a substantial backlash among women voters that cost the Republicans the Senate seat in both Florida, where you have a very close race, and also in Texas, where Ted Cruz is facing serious competition. So politics are at stake here. That's exactly what you were talking about before. Your concern is what happens with Republican women, and we've seen this locally in this, the special election in House 72 a couple of months ago, where a considerable amount of Republican women on the Sun Coast crossed over and voted for Margaret Good. Uh, yes. Uh, if uh, the Republican leadership in the Senate mishandles uh, this, uh, it could, uh, could be one more poke in an already uh, riled up segment, demographic uh, segment, and it could come back uh, and haunt uh, Republicans for a long time. Uh, and I was also uh, talking just a little bit uh, before, to the extent that we're focusing on uh, the outcome of the confirmation vote for uh, Judge Kavanaugh. I mean, there's lots of issues here that become personal, but with respect to that vote, if that is what people are focused on, there's only really four opinions that, that matter, um, and, th and that's the, the four potentially swing Republicans on that committee. And so that's uh, Corker Flake, uh, Collins, and potentially Murkowski to give one the other three's cover. Morgan, you talked about whether if there was only a sober body to actually look at this dispassionately, but if you have a situation where it's Judge Kavanaugh and his accuser, without any kind of independent investigation of it, you know, how can you judge? Um, isn't it just, uh, you know, he said, she said, and isn't that exactly what people don't want? Um, the answer to the last one, yes, that's not what anyone wants, but, but most cases are like that. I mean, most cases are about he said, she said, and you look to the corroborating evidence that whatever there may be, were there other people who were there who have done contemporaneous testimony at the time? I mean, I know Mark Judge wrote a book about his, you know, his activities back then. Um, he'd be somebody you'd talk to. Anybody else at that party, if it were a real case, you would subpoena everybody at the party, you'd get everybody's uh, testimony as to what happened. You'd look at things like, you know, yearbook posts and contemporaneous writings and what people may have said to therapists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there'll be, there either will or won't be corroborating evidence for one side or the other. So it's not a he said, she said, because that's just not the way cases work. Okay, we are just getting warmed up. Our conversation on the allegations made against Brett Kavanaugh will continue after a quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are talking about the allegations against Supreme Court Justice nominee Brett Kavanaugh. And joining us for more are Sarasota attorney Morgan Bentley, Frank Alcock, political science professor at New College, and joining us by Skype, a columnist for InsiderNJ.com, Alan Steinberg, who uh, served in the administration of President George W. Bush. And Alan, let me uh, ask you this question because it appears that it, it's more likely or we're hearing that uh, the accuser in this case may well testify on Monday. Uh, and uh, it, Judge Kavanaugh would also testify. And you will have those two witnesses and then the Republicans will move on to a, a vote. Uh, what do you think happens within the Republican Party um, if a lot of people share your opinion, uh, if this, you know, it goes right to the Senate floor and a vote is, is just cast along those lines without any other kind of uh, investigation? If it looks like a steamrolled nomination, there will be a tremendous backlash. The Republican Party has been losing great numbers nationwide. Uh, it's true that Trump gets a larger percentage of that shrinking number backing him. However, the number is shrinking because the public is alienated by the Republican stance, which is contrary to what I believe in terms of immigration, in terms of civil rights, in terms of uh, the xenophobia that prevails in the Trump administration. So if this nomination is steamrolled, you will have a backlash. It will cost the Republicans very possibly a very close Senate. The Republicans are gonna, are gonna lose the House of Representatives anyway. That's a done deal. The Democrats have that. However, the Senate, the Republicans still have an edge. But you will have in states like Texas, which is going from uh, red to purple, you will have uh, Ted Cruz losing support, and he has to back the conservative nominee anyway, but he will alienate women voters. Uh, I think that Gillum is going to win in Florida. I'm covering your race very closely, and I think he can pull in a large African-American vote. And now, if it appears that this nomination was steamrolled and the uh, complainant, uh, you know, Dr. Ford, was not dealt with fairly, 
you're going to have a larger uh, women's vote on behalf of Bill Nelson, and the Republicans will have lost both houses of the Congress. As many Republicans is that you, given the amount of time and, and the, the faded memories, you are not going to be able to prove guilt or innocence here. And that leads a lot of Republicans to believe this is simply about stopping this nomination one way or the other. Uh, oh, I think that's true, which is why I go back to my original point is you've got to, it, you know, sometimes being heard is the most important thing. Um, and, and, you know, how the case actually comes out is of, of I mean, it's important, but it's not as important as just feeling like you've been heard. And to, to your guest point is, I think what has to happen is you, the, the Senate has to make everybody involved feel like they've been heard, whether they're, you know, this particular woman or Brett Kavanaugh or the, the people who have such a vested interest in this and are, and are like so angry about it, they all need to be heard because if you shortcut the process, you're gonna alienate, by definition, one of those uh, groups of people. But, but Frank, the, the, the process will be shortcut no matter what you do. You could have a, a really good hearing next week where uh, this woman gets an opportunity to, to state her case and Judge Kavanaugh has an opportunity to state his, uh, but with no FBI investigation, um, it's just talk and either side is not going to be happy. It depends upon how quickly the vote happens uh, after uh, the hearing, if the hearing happens Monday, there might be a little bit more time to collect some uh, information if the hearing were pushed back to later in the week. I am not on the Judiciary Committee. I can imagine uh, if I were a Democrat or a Republican on that committee, there are certain questions that I would be asking both of these witnesses with respect um, to, to what they remember happening at that party or even if they were at any party that resembled something like that and then you might actually be able to corroborate within a few days some of the facts that would lend more credibility to one side or the other. Speak for a moment to a lot of our viewers who are watching this right now and this is, they're, they're saying this is all, this is not about Judge Kavanaugh. This is all about the last nominee, Merrick Garland, President Obama's nominee, who was held up and not even given a vote and this is payback by the Democrats. It's about everything and that's part of the point. You cannot extract yourself. This, um, it, it, for Dr. Ford, this is a deeply uh, personal issue and certainly something that has impacted and affected her, uh, and that seems, those claims seem credible, regardless of what may or may not have happened that night. This is something that has impacted her life, uh, and for her, that's her reality. But we're at a, an extremely political moment right now in our history, and certainly the Merrick uh, uh, Garland case uh, and a variety of other things factor into some really, really intense feelings. And you, you, you and so it's about that uh, for many people in a number of ways. And so I don't think you're going to be able to extract yourself from the politics. You just do the best that you can uh, is just trying to apply the right process uh, here, give people uh, a, a moment, uh, their ability to come out and, and say what they have to say. It might not take that long. Like, and a little Ellen, longer than they're saying, but it might not take that long. And Ellen, I mean, you, you've expressed your opinion in terms of wanting another investigation here, but Republicans uh, and members of your party do believe that this nominee is being steamrolled here because, uh, because of what happened in the last administration. Um, and as Frank said, all of these things could be correct, uh, but what would you say to other Republicans? Well, that brings up a bigger problem, and that is that this president, and this is one of the reasons I have opposed him so vehemently, is hell-bent at destroying the credibility of institutions. And one of the institutions most venerated in America is the FBI. And you have a president out there who is saying that the FBI is a cancer on America. So if they make the find, they won't make a formal finding, They'll say, this is what we discovered. You make the judgment. But you will have the president absolutely crashing without any credibility what the FBI says. And that brings up a problem that is bigger than the nomination itself. This is a president who is alienating millions of Americans by destroying institutions. And I think that what Republicans have to say to themselves is, this is a very well-qualified nominee. However, a serious allegation has been raised. Let it be heard. Let the FBI do its investigation. Why is there a rush to judgment? Let them do their investigation. Let them come back with what they find. Let the nation hear and see both Dr. Ford and Brett Kavanaugh. Now, let me say something on behalf of Brett Kavanaugh. I served in the Bush administration, and he was very well regarded. 
Perhaps he's telling the truth. Perhaps Dr. Ford is not. But we can only make that determination after seeing them both. You know, we always try to get a sense of what people here on the Sun Coast are, are thinking about these things. You, you know, you are well known in the community, Tiger Bay Club, uh, in the legal circles around here. What are people down at the courthouse saying? <laughs> Um, well, a lot. First of all, it's uh, definitely a topic of conversation. It, there seems to be, obviously, there's a political divide. There seems to be a little bit of a, of a generational and a gender divide. Um, I, I think, you know, women in particular feel like, you know, this is something that they can all relate to, if not personally, people who have been close to them or something where, it, you know, it may not be the classic, you know, rape situation, but some, something like this where you're assaulted and you're overpowered or what have you. So they can, they can relate a lot more, and especially younger women, um, I think, are more vocal about um, how this is something that happens to, to women and it needs not to happen to women. And so there's definitely a gender divide on it. Um, even if they don't believe her, they believe she should be heard. And, and they may, uh, may not believe her even after they've been heard, but they all seem to feel like, why are you snuffing her out? Because she's a woman? You don't wanna listen to her because she's a woman? That's what I hear. That phrase I just said, I've heard so many different times. Hey Frank, is this any different than the, the reaction after Anita Hill? If you remember the, the, the allegations of sexual harassment that she made against Clarence Thomas, was it over 30 years yeah, ago? Yeah, lots of parallels between the cases and the way that they're playing out. Although it was a different time, you certainly didn't have the Me Too movement back then. And I actually think public opinion at the time that Anita uh, Hill testified was not really in her favor, and I think we've come to learn some lessons from that and how uh, she was treated at that, uh, at that hearing. Coming back to today, I know it sounds rather technical, but I do think uh, the, the timing matters. Uh, because this is so political, inherently political, uh, if Dr. Ford were to ask for something that's going to take multiple weeks, I, I don't think she's going to get it, and I, and, I, and I think the sympathy will go down. But I think she's shifting today, and if she's just asking for a couple of more days, then it would seem, I think, unreasonable for Republicans to try to force it through. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there. I want to thank you all. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on securing so-called soft targets. We live in a world where everyone is on alert 24-7 in fear of terror, striking at any moment. We have seen mass shootings in the United United States from school shootings at Virginia Tech to Parkland to a concert in Las Vegas or a nightclub in Orlando. Unfortunately, we live in a society where many of us are looking over our backs in places where we should feel safe. Sarah says listening to people who want to pretend it is not happening and actually pass some laws to restrict access to firearms, not banning, restricting sales to people who can pass a federal background check and who pass a gun safety and accuracy exam. And then there is Vanessa who says, stop over informing everyone, especially if it isn't local news. Stop over informing everyone, Vanessa. I don't have all the answers, but I'm pretty sure living with your head in the sand isn't one of them. If you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast. And we want to thank our guests tonight, Sarasota attorney extraordinaire Morgan Bentley, Frank Alcock, a political science professor at New College, and by Skype, a, uh, a columnist for InsiderNJ.com, Alan Steinberg, who served in the administration of President George W. Bush.